how I paint mountains on plaster on my in-scale model railroad. We're gonna do that right now. Hey, this is Brian with the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western, welcoming you to the channel. Today we are going to do just what I said a minute ago. We are going to paint mountains on plaster. I have my assistant in the uh, train shed with me for most of the episode today, AJ. She's doing some filming. She's doing some help painting. We had a good time. We painted these uh, mountains on this plaster, and they're looking pretty good. I'm going to talk you through it. I'm going to show you how I did it. Sit back and enjoy. I appreciate you watching. You'll figure out how you like to do it the best. Excellent. Just take your time. Try not to get drippies on the paper. announced that I finally have my new mobile cinematographer in the shed with me today and she is going to be filming with me about three days a week going to take a lot of work off of me because now I have a mm -hmm. moving tripod all right which is great what I'm doing is a very weak mixture of 50-50 uh, basically paint and water I'm using the sponge brush and I actually just squish the sponge brush into the sponge brush into the hole let the paint and water mixture run down and then I spread it. It's a pretty easy process. This is burnt umber. Dad, don't, don't squirt it like, no squirt it on the couch. I did. And then I've got some water here to mix with it. Mm -hmm. And then I just put my sponge brush in there and I spin, 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 spin. What I do make sure of, I make very sure there's no dripping. There's no dripping, very good, no dripping. And I make sure that I have this paper over the tracks in case I do. So I get a good nice, this is a thin mixture. And so I get it nice and mixed up and blended well. I, Daddy, I got it really closer to the paint. So. And look at that nice angle my new cinematographer has. She is learning. It is her first day on the job. She is a professional, but this is the first day filming on the model railroad uh, scenery work. And so I've got a very good brush now. All I do, boom. Oh. And then as it drips, I just fill in, okay? I dripped a little more than I wanted to there, but we just... So all I do is I splotch and it runs down. And as it runs down, I'm just filling in these holes. Okay. After a minute, it gets good to where it can be blotted a little better without running. And so I'm just filling in the holes as it drips down. I let gravity take the water down. And as gravity takes it down, I'm filling in. And these mountains right here, 
will begin to be having snow on them. This is where Yeah, let me let me let me show you guys what what snows we're, we're gonna use. So I think we're gonna use this can. Let me show you guys. Let me get the camera. This right there. Not not this one, but that one. So as we move this way on the layout, we are actually heading further west and in and up towards the Continental Divide. Um, I showed y'all that can right there. I'm not very sure if it's washable or not. And at this morning, I painted this, but so I can't do that now because I'm filming my dad. That's right. She's gonna, she's gonna actually do the whole part, that whole mountain over there, that whole peak um, that's going into the Moffat Tunnel will be hers to do as far as dry brushing and everything else. The next layer that'll be going over the top of this when it dries is going to be a lighter color and it won't be so thin so it won't go into the holes as much and as we come this way over to this way we will be going yeah because we because we had to put this paper over the train tracks so um the paint's kind of drippy and drippy because so we so the so this paint will um go on the train track so we had to put that paper there's some blue paper over there and here's some paper over here so so that thing right there that thing that white thing is i can't reach peak. that that's a peak oh a mountain peak a mountain peak that I can't reach that, so we are gonna. Uh, my dad's. Uh, my dad has to do that. So yeah. Here's my dad. Um, I got um uh, my dad's hat, that hat he's wearing now. I I gave that hat for Christmas. Yeah. And you will see much more of that hat. I'm gonna try to even keep it somewhat clean. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be hard. But yeah. if it gets model railroad two, scenery on it, then one, so be two, it because three, I'll four. be wearing it out here. dad i just have to film all this brown that's what i did right there this is what i did right there and that's my dad that's the hat i got my dad for christmas me and my mom gave him that the hat right there and Hey everybody, welcome back, and I've got my famous cinematographer back on the case, everybody. And what we have done, we have completed laying the brown foundation down everywhere. Good way to show them what we're talking about, young AJ, I hear you. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Now, what I decided to do is, after the fact, I decided, hey, I'm going to go check out YouTube, shocker, and see what the other model railroaders do in regard to painting mountains. And Jerry Satz made some great suggestions. I appreciate that, Jerry. Also, my man CSX Mad Robert. I ended up landing on his page and watching some mountain stuff that he did painting mountains. And I tell you what, it looked fantastic. It looked exactly like my one and mine to turn out. So this is Robert at CSX Mad. I'm going to show you his channel a little bit right now. We'll flash to that. Welcome back. Robert's channel is fantastic. I encourage you to go over there, subscribe, click the bell icon. I asked him a question and he answered real quick. Robert's method was to lay paint on the white plaster in a certain manner. He said gray, black, brown, white, 
in different thin uh, different thinnesses and thicknesses and whether dry brush or runny or whatever but I'll explain that later but he started on white plaster and I had already painted everything brown so I shot him a message into one of his comments on an older video and man he responded really quick and I want to appreciate my, uh, Robert for doing that thank you very much Robert and so what he told me is go ahead and do the process just like I, uh, like he showed us I'm going to follow this process exactly except instead of laying it down on white I'm laying it down on brown he thinks it's just going to bring out some great colors we're going to see how it works out I'm going to actually follow his instructions pretty well so my uh, lady AJ is filming while I do the first mix on the so Robert had a method um, that I'm going to try to follow pretty closely if not exactly and so what he did is he used about a cup of water and he used two caps of gray so I'm going to show you do that right now and I have got let's see I got a I got to pull the top off this <laughs> daddy don't don't use don't use your teeth because it'll break your teeth very good AJ you're right Cause guys, um, Santa bought me so many brands, and my when 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 I was opening them, we we were doing a video, and and my dad said no using teeth, and and I'm just telling my dad to do that. She's exactly right. I got it off, and I'm ready now. So I need two cap pulls, and what Robert did was he used a, a like a two liter cap, filled it up, and. He knocked it off. He actually used the water like I'm doing. He didn't get his thumbs dirty, I don't think, like I just did. But I'm going to clear this cap, and then I'm going to do another one like he said. All right, close off. And his suggestion is this thickness and consistency, about a cup of water to two liter cups of gray. And I'm going to mix this thoroughly and then come back to you when I get right here, because it's hard to see this one over here. I'm going to come back to you on a uh, video showing me applying it on this section right here in just a minute. Thank you very much. You may stop. All right, so two things. Um, I did a little test area right over here and what I found is that with the brown on the bottom the mixture that I'm using the two caps to the cup of water uh, the two cups of gray paint to the cup of water might be a little thin on the gray because Robert was putting the gray on white and I'm putting the gray on brown so I might need to add another cap full of gray paint um, that's yet to be determined. I'm going to try it here under this good light and see I am going to try it as is and see how that turns out. Next, Robert sprayed his down really good prior to adding the gray. Um, I'm sure he probably did that because the plaster is porous will suck up the paint and this helped the uh, gray spread and run a little better for him. Um, since I've already got the brown paint on the plaster Mine's not near, nearly as porous, and I don't know how much of this spraying I'm going to need to do. Um, I am going to try a little bit of it and see how it acts, and then I'll go from there. Because I'm going to do it on a little part, and um, then I'll see which way I prefer. Um, so, I may or may not use the water due to the fact that the brown paint is already on the plaster, so for it is less uh, porous. And I may add a little more gray to my mix due to the fact of I'm painting over brown instead of white.
All right, I have added more gray to my mix. I basically doubled it. And I may have had a little more water than Robert did too. All right, good morning. I'm back after the gray that I applied on top of the brown has dried. And what I found after it dried was not super surprising. Um, it's, it's a lot darker than I initially thought. I figured it out pretty quick. What, what I found was happening is when I applied the gray on top of the brown, even though the brown was good and dry, um, the moisture from the gray pulled some of the brown out into the gray and darkened the gray, um, which makes sense. Um, so in following CSX Mad Robert's recipe, um, well, I didn't follow the recipe because he put the gray on top of the white. And then after talking to him, we decided that we were gonna see what was gonna happen. And uh, I put the gray on top of the brown and the gray pulled some of the brown out into the gray and darkened the gray. Um, I thickened the gray uh, paint mixture up as I went around and I did get a little better result, although an even darker result. The more gray I seemed, the thicker gray I seemed to add, the darker result it seemed to pull out, but the gray did pop on top at least. Um, over here towards this side. Um, just... You see, as I thickened the gray up, I did get more. I wanted to thicken it up as I went around because I do want more of a gray look. And then as we come this way, I want more of a brown look. This area got super dark. All right, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to mix some brown and white to get a light tan. And I'm gonna put some over here on my test area and see what happens, see how it comes out. Um, what I found with the gray is that even though I wasn't real happy about it, I wanted to go ahead and continue so I had a consistent, uh, consistent paint pattern all the way around so I didn't end up with splotchy areas that were difficult to match. I'm already going to have an area that's going to be tough to match through here. I do kind of have that nice little transition area right there with that shelf that's going to kind of help to do that. But uh, what I'm going to do now is, again, I'm going to do a lot of white with a little of brown, and I'm going to lay it on the top. And what I'm hoping happens is that, that, that I put on a color that's a little bit too light and that that background brings out some of that darkness into that light color. What it's gonna leave though, what it's gonna leave in the end is in the crevasses, in the holes and the, cra and the crevices and all that stuff, whatever that is called. Over crevasses filled in. Call them crevasses in some places. But anyway, um, crevices, crevasses, whatever you wanna call them. Over crevasses filled in. Dark down underneath. So when I do the dry brush, uh, dry brush paint on top and all, um, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to look good. We'll see what happens.
Alright, so basically what I've ended up doing is as I worked the way around, I played with the colors and found out that a little bit darker than a tan is what I'm wanting to go from here this way. I just showed you a clip of what this looks like. Um, I am going to um, go ahead and come this way. This paint is just a shade darker and I'm going to start with that over here by the mill. And if I like that, then that's fine. I'll keep going with it this way. And if it is a little darker than I want, that's fine too because it's right there by the mill with this, sh uh, whatever that's called, the slash burner um, right there because there will be a slash burner right there. So there could be some soot and stuff on those rocks anyway. So if that one's a little darker, it's okay. I'll lighten it up a little bit and come this way. What I did to make my um, tan is I actually used... Uh, some yellow, some brown, uh, this is burnt umber, and also some raw sienna. And so I came up with this from that. It actually looks like milk chocolate, um, exactly. So uh, if you like the color, um, again, I'm going over something dark, and so I am having a little bit darker color come out. So we'll see what, what, what we like, we'll see what happens. Alright, so after getting three base colors down, I got a dark brown, then I got a gray, then I went with a light brown, and now I am doing the dry brushing on the top. And I, Anyway, so I called out to School Kill River John and described the color I was looking for to him, and he suggested the following. Five parts burnt sienna to one part blue. And that makes what John referred to, I think he called it a mute black, it's a, a, a dull black and added that to about 20 parts white, so 25 of one. Um, basically, I did about four times uh, the white after I got the uh, blue and the burnt sienna mixed. And that did make a black, and that turned out to a very nice light gray color, a color, very nice color, uh, an ivory type uh, that I was exactly like I was looking for. Um, another suggestion John made was to mix it well but not thoroughly so it would leave some color variations and I liked what I have seen um, from what doing that before. That's a great suggestion too. So I do suggest um, on the final dry brush, and that might be a final, I might actually come back in after this time with one more of a more vibrant white just on the tips and that would be it.
Okay, so update. All I'm doing is working my way around, going lighter, lighter, lighter each time. And putting lighter coats on top. I have stopped right in here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of doing that. Just wanted to show to see where I was. Here's where I am with your color right now. And the next coat will be even lighter. And then we'll probably go uh, maybe one more and stop there. We'll see. And I do want to thank you for sticking around. This is a long episode. I appreciate you hanging out and watching with me today. If you have not already, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the bell icon. Please share this with your other model and friends you think might enjoy this. I would appreciate that. If you're on other platforms, please share this on there as well as I don't use them. But I would appreciate your support in promoting them as well. Again, this is Brian with the Iron Horse Route. I do appreciate you sitting around and watching with me today. Look for another episode coming out in a couple weeks, maybe actually a week. I might put out my video for Cuz's Challenge in about a week, so check back in there. I appreciate y'all. Look for the uh, Community Roundhouse live stream. will be coming the first Wednesday of May. That's sneaking up real quick. That's going to be on SRV John's channel. And we will see y'all there. I appreciate y'all coming out and supporting that. If you're able to, come out and chat with us and enjoy. Sit around. Let's have some fun. That's the first Wednesday of May on John Schoolkill River Valley's channel. We'll see y'all later. Take care.